evening. Calling to order, meeting of Monday, January 11th, 2021. We'll all rise and salute the flag. Yes, it's a muy buenas tardes. It's an once de. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call for members, Councilor Gino. Here. Here, Councilor Guanasso. Here. Here, Councilor McKenna. Here. Here, Councilor Morabito. Here. Here, Councilor Novoselsky. Here. Here, Councilor Powers. Here. Here, Councilor Rotundo. Present. Here, Councilor Serino. Here. Here, Councilor Visconti. Here. Here, Councilor Zambudo. Here. Here, and Council President Keefe. Here. Here, quorum is present. Calendar item number two, election of the City Council President for calendar year 2021. Mr. President, Mr. President, I rise to the occasion to ask the Revere City Council vote election of a City Council President for calendar year 2021. Please ask for a roll call. Do as any councils have a nomination? When, when your name is called as a city councilor, please indicate the person you're selecting for council president. Councilor Janino. Councilor Anthony T. Zambudo. Councilor Janino voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Guanasso. Anthony Zambudo. Councilor Guanasso voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor McKenna. Anthony Zambudo. Councilor McKenna voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Morabito. Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Morabito voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Novoselsky. Anthony Zambudo. Councilor Novoselsky voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Powers. Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Powers voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Rotundo. Councilor Anthony Zambudo. Councilor Rotundo voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Serino. Councilor Anthony T. Zambudo. Councilor Serino voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Visconti. Councilor Anthony T. Zambudo. Councilor Visconti voting for Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Zambudo. Councilor Anthony T. Zambudo. Councilor Zambudo voting for himself and Council President Keefe. Councilor Zambudo. Council President Keefe voting for Councillor Zambudo. Councillor Zambudo is the new City Council President for 2021. No, it's yours as well. You have to turn your volume off. Well, okay. Well, look at mute. <laughs> Quick. Hey. It's on mute. Quick to oh, criticize. Okay. Councilor Zambudo, please raise your right hand and repeat after me using your own name after I say I. I. I, Anthony T. Zambudo. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me all the duties incumbent upon me as president of the Revere City Council as president of the Revere City Council according to the best of my abilities and understanding according to the best of my abilities and understanding agreeably to the rules and regulations agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth so help me God so help me God congratulations Council. thank you Jerry Thank you. 
Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, someone, is there something, someone's phone on? Is there volume on someone's laptop? That's what's causing the echo. Hmm. Yeah, so it's not that good. Calendar item two is the election of the City Council Vice President for, cal for calendar year 2021. Mr. President, Mr. President, Council at this Council. time, I would like the Revere City Council to elect a Vice President for the year 2021. When the Council's name is called, please state your indication as to who you would select as Vice President. Thank you. For the election of the City Council Vice Presidency, Councilor Janino. There's an issue with the speakers. Again. Un problema con el speaker. Forgive us for a quick uh, delay here. Okay. Can you ask to <clears throat> restarting the roll call for City Council Vice President Councilor Janino? Councilor Jerry Visconti. Councilor Giannino voting for Visconti. Councilor Guanasso. Councilor Jerry Visconti. Councilor Guanasso voting for uh, Visconti. Councilor Keefe. Councilor Jerry Visconti. Councilor Keefe voting for Councilor Visconti. Councilor McKenna. Councilor Jerry Visconti. Councilor McKenna voting for Councilor Visconti. Councilor Morabito. But Jerry Visconti. Councilor Morabito voting for Councilor Visconti. Councilor Novoselsky. Councilor Jerry Visconti. Councilor Novoselsky voting for Councilor Visconti. Councilor Powers. Councilor Visconti. Councilor Powers voting for Councilor Visconti. Councilor Rotundo. Councilor Visconti. Councilor Rotundo voting for Councilor Visconti. Councilor Serino. Councilor Gerardo Visconti. Councilor Serino voting for Councilor Visconti. Councilor Visconti. Councilor Visconti. Councilor Visconti voting for himself and Council President Zambudo. Councilor Jerry Visconti. Council President Zambudo voting for Councilor Visconti. The new City Council Vice President for 2021 is Jerry Visconti. Mr. President, Council Keith. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I know that we, we're, we're finishing up, and uh, congratulations on your uh, newly appointed presidency. Thank you. If sir. I could uh, take a moment of personal privilege Go to right ahead. Uh, have a brief, brief statement. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, to the residents of Revere and uh, my fellow uh, city council members and uh, friends, um, I wanted to thank you again for allowing me to serve as the president for the city council. Um, this past year will be one that we all soon hope to forget. And like the entire world, the residents of Revere have faced much adversity and struggle. It's easy to want to move on. However, with life and all that its ups and downs bring us, I would be remiss if I, could, if I couldn't reflect on some of the positives of the year. Our city government 
has be been behind its residents from day one, lockstep on recovery, treatment, support, and general kindness. Neighbors, neighbors from all walks of life have chipped in and helped. I've never witnessed such a collaborative effort to serve the residents of Revere, and for that, I am truly grateful. Fortunately, I will not be going very far, and I'm just going to be seeing seated three seats away from you, Councilor Zambido. But from the bottom of my heart, it has truly been an honor to serve the residents of Revere and my fellow colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you, former President Keefe. Uh, you did a wonderful job. Uh, we're all proud of you, and it was certainly under uh, unbelievable circumstances. I hope to uh, do as well in my year. Thank you. Um, I just want to take a minute to, um, I'm, I'm humbled by the support of my colleagues. Uh, I'm fortunate to have a, a great group of professionals to work with. I am I'm truly honored to be their leader this year. and. Uh, I know that uh, we are going to do great things in uh, partnership with the administration and with, with a lot of great communication between the administration <coughs> and the city council. So I'm looking forward to a very productive year for the citizens uh, and, and I'm also looking forward to the end of this COVID stuff. So thank you very much again. Again, I'm humbled by the support and uh, the trust. And, and I will not let you down. Thank you. Council President. Vice President Visconti. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to thank my colleagues as well for their support in electing me as Vice President. Um, I would also like to congratulate Councilor Zimbudo as our newly elected President uh, and look forward to working with him as well as my colleagues on the council as well as the administration in what I expect to be another challenging year in our city. So I want to thank everyone. I am humbled by, um, by this and I uh, will work um, very diligently and hard with this council group to move this city forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Madam Clerk. Calendar item number five, I'm sorry, calendar item number four, approval of the journal of the regular meeting of December 14th, 2020. One move. Calendar item number five, veto message from the mayor regarding the petition of Squire Road Realty, LLC, to amend the zoning map of the city of Rivera as follows. Section 1, Title 17 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Riviera and the Zoning Map, provided by Section 17.12.020 of said title, is hereby amended to change the zoning district designation of property known and numbered as Lot A at 398 Squire Road from the Residential B District to the General Business District. So at this time, I'm going to call on uh, my good friend and colleague from Ward 6 uh, to... Uh, give his version of why we're about to override this veto and and uh, and then I'll give my two cents on it after him. Councilor Serino. Thank you, Mr. President. So thank you, Mr. President. Am I unmuted now? Okay. So right before Christmas, we took this matter up. This was 398 Squire Road at the corner of Stephen Street. And they are looking to bring that uh, plot of land, that parcel into uniform zoning um, to make it all general business versus general business and a sliver, which is not uh, general business. So when we had initially passed this, I'm not an attorney, and I wanted to make sure that Stephen Street was protected uh, because I did not want in the future the residential home that's there to be torn down and some uh, sort of business or apartments or what have you be placed on that strip. 
subsequently, after we passed this, uh, the city solicitor took a look at it. And when I was led to believe that it was um, a, a permanent solution and it would be uh, zoned general business in perpetuity, I was, I shouldn't say I was misled, but the, uh, the city solicitor did disagree that the, he found a statute that uh, covenants for zoning are only good for 20 years. So I, I'm sorry, 30 years, not 20 years, 30 years. So I had asked the mayor right after uh, the city solicitor determined that where it was the holidays and we didn't have any meetings uh, within a few days, I asked the mayor to veto this to buy us time to send it back to the council so that we could work on a resolution. Since the holidays, we have come up with a resolution. There is a provision in the general laws that allow a zoning change to be, or a, um, a covenant for a zoning change to be valid for 20 years in addition to that 30 years. So that will bring this covenant uh, to, be, to be in effect for 50 years. Now, I don't know, I, I will, I'll still be here in 50 years, I hope. Hopefully I'm living in the Point of Pines on the beach by then. I'll be in my 80s and retired. But I think in 50 years, a lot can happen in the city. And I am okay with um, making sure, I, I'm okay with the 50-year provision. I just did not, I was not comfortable with the 30 years. So long story short, this does protect Stephen Street for a couple of generations for 50 years. And in 50 years, you know, who, who knows where we will be as a city. And hopefully, um, you know, it, it will all work out in, in that time. But for now and for, as you know, for the next 50 years, it will be okay. So I do hope that we vote to override this veto, but it is not an override as a um, chastisement of the mayor or an administration. This is simply a procedural thing. And I, I thank the mayor for vetoing it to buy us time to determine a uh, reasonable resolution. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, if I might, uh, I want to thank the mayor for cooperating with the city council. This was uh, this was uh, to delay uh, this from taking effect. And there's you know there's a ten day window that you have to either approve or veto something. And the mayor uh, worked in cooperation with the city council. We're very grateful for it. And uh, as my colleague, uh, Council Serino said, we are uh, certainly grateful and not in any way chastising the mayor. I just want to make that very clear. So uh, I think at this, at this time, if no other councilors want to speak on this, we can go ahead with a roll call to override the veto. Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, for a point of uh, clarity, a yes vote is to override the mayor's veto? Yes, a yes vote overrides the mayor of his veto, a no vote sustains the mayor's veto. Oh, thank you very much for clarity. Shall the city council pass this ordinance over the mayor's objections? Councillor Janino? Yes. Yes, Councillor Guanasso? Yes. Yes, Councillor Keefe? Yes. Yes, Councillor McKenna? Yes. Yes, Councillor Morabito? Yes. Yes. Yes, Councilor Novoselsky. Yes. Yes, Councilor Powers. Yes. Yes, Councilor Rotundo. Yes. Councilor Rotundo voting yes. Councilor Serino. Yes. Yes, Councilor Visconti. Yes. Yes, and Council President Zambudo. Yes. Yes, and, the ordinance has been passed. And I just want to say I apologize to uh, Attorney Simeone, who is now I see on my Zoom screen, but wasn't there. I was going to call on him uh, to clarify how we cleared this up, but uh, I guess if, if, if you'd like to say something, Councilor Simeone, uh, you can go right ahead, Attorney. President, I, I don't think anything needs to be added. I think the Ward Councilman eloquently uh, set forth the parameters of why this action was required. We understood the action was going to be done for that sole purpose. I think he's accomplished his goal and we have accomplished our goal, which is to get it passed and also protect that neighborhood. We thank Councilor Serino for his cooperation and the mayor and this honorable body as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk. 
Calendar item number six, communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of McCourt Construction Company as a licensed drain layer. Appointments. Calendar item number seven, motion presented by Councilor Serino, that the mayor instruct the Parks and Recreation Department to not turn on the lights at the field at St. Mary's in the evenings from November 30th through March 1st unless there is a baseball or softball game or some sort of city sanctioned event. These lights are often, these lights are left on some evenings when fields are unused and therefore electricity is being wasted. Councilor Serino. Thank you, Mr. President. So I had initially filed this motion right after our last meeting in December because a resident had called me a few times and he had mentioned he lives in Ward 6 and, you know, when the kids aren't playing baseball, a lot of times those lights are on in the evenings. And as a taxpayer, he was concerned that we are wasting electricity. However, I have to be honest, since I filed this motion with the clerk, there have been a couple of issues down at the ball fields where I've, I had to um, contact the police department. So I understand that having the lights on could be a public safety issue. Um, I see that Mike Hinojosa is on the call and maybe he can address that. Um, but basically I was wondering maybe if I could even amend the motion or uh, based on Mike's feedback, I wonder if there's any way to either dim the lights or have some of the lights versus all of the lights on uh, versus, you know, having all those those bright um, LEDs on all the time. So, Mr. President, if uh, through you, if, if you wouldn't mind yielding the floor to uh, Mike Hanahosa, Director Hanahosa, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, Mr. Director. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see all of you again. Um, so, just far, as far as St. Mary's goes, we, we have had some um it's really a public safety issue this was uh, this was a motion passed uh, asked for by um past counselor patch uh back in november of 2016 that we actually keep the lights on so since november november of 2016 we have kept lights on even when there aren't any baseball games or softball games being played down there uh we currently keep the lights on until eight o'clock every night we do not uh, put on all three fields. I rotate the fields one at a time. So um, it, it's not lit up like it normally is, but it still provides that public safety for uh, people that are, that would like to walk and stuff like that. The, the field and the whole park was designed um, at, with a walking feature to it. So that's what the, all the paths are for. So we, we thought it just be a good idea that the lights were um, you know, kept on. We're, we're not trying to keep them on until 10 o'clock. I mean, uh, I think eight o'clock is a reasonable um, number, you know, for us to have, but um, th there have been more and more sightings of coyotes down there. So I think the, um, the, the lights kind of keep them away. You know, I, I think after eight o'clock and, you know, if you're walking that late, it's, but we just thought about if you come home at five o'clock or six o'clock from work that, you might still want to walk your dog. Um, you know, as far as electricity is concerned, uh, the cost to um, to run the light um, gets less and less as the daylight. We turn them on at um, sunset and we shut them off at eight o'clock. So right now they're currently running for about four hours, a little less than four hours. Um, and as we move through January and February, as that sunset gets further you know it only ends up being about three hours so um the the cost to run the lights uh for a four hour um for a four hour night for one field is about 19 dollars and 20 cents it's about 40 cents an hour per fixture we run 12 fixtures so okay. I, I i hope that i hope that explains it but that's that that does mr director that's that's great information, Mr. Director. Appreciate that. And uh, so, uh, what's what's the will of my colleague? I would say, Mr. President, you can place it on file. Now we do have a, an explanation. And to be honest, since since I filed that motion last month, like I said, there have been a couple of issues, and um, I think the public safety factor does outweigh the, the cost. So 
Thank you for being here tonight, Mr. Director. Thank you, guys. Hope all is well. We'll see you soon. Great. Thanks, see you Mike. soon, Mike. Okay, so we'll place that on file. Calendar item number eight, motion presented by Councilor Guanasso that the City Council award a certificate of merit honoring Speaker of the House Robert A. DeLeo for his many years of dedicated public service to the residents of Revere and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Councilor Guanasso. Mr. President, it's with the greatest of honor that I make this motion. He not only is a great public servant, he's a great friend. He's a great friend to many of us. And for an individual to serve 30 years in the House of Representatives and representing our great city uh, in the fashion that he has done, he's treated Revere as if he lived here. Uh, and that is an unbelievable statement to make. He spends a lot of time in Revere. He was dedicated to Revere. He had his place of business in Revere. He really did an unbelievable representation for our people in our city. And to furthermore, to advance to be speaker for 12 years, Mr. President, to serve not only the people of our district, but to serve the whole Commonwealth. And we, as a neighboring city, as a representative to, in his area, what, what better could you ask for? Having a, a, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. we we'll probably never see that again until Jessica Giannino takes over the speakership. But we were so blessed to have such an individual and in, in in, uh, uh, his dual policy to us as he invited each and every one of us to his annual meeting and gathering in the State House. And he offered these uh, luxurious luncheons. I remember the first days of his office, uh, <laughs> It was a little cubby hole downstairs, and we had to keep our jackets and coats on because it was so cold. And he offered out these little bit of uh, sandwiches that he said, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Representative, this, this is what we get? But lo and behold, did we see this individual rise to the ranks as chair ways and means. And then we saw what was taking place and the type of power that was coming along with him. And the way he distributed that authority was so genuine. He, he, he was just tremendous. He never looked at himself as a powerful individual. He just carried out the responsibility of the position and did it with first class authority. So I offer this motion out. I know my colleagues want to join in with me on this because this is an opportunity to recognize an individual who served our community well and he's very much deserving of this merit of honoring him. Nothing else we could say but the wonderful things that we're about to bestow upon him and just a, a little token of appreciation of what we think of him. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Guanasso. And before I call on my colleagues, I, I would ask that uh, if you wouldn't mind, we'd make this as part of the whole city council, city council as a whole. That's what I re referenced when I was speaking. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, councilors? Ash, I don't see the hands here. I guess I don't, I don't have it. No councilors have their hands raised. No councilors have their hands raised. Okay. Uh, I'll, in that case, I'll take a second uh, to say a couple of words about our dear friend, Speaker Robert DeLeo. I think uh, uh, Arthur may have known him a little longer than me. Uh, however, uh, I did work on the speaker's first campaign. I, I know. And, uh, and uh, we all shared an office there on Squire Road many years ago. So many, I don't want to mention how long ago. Um, however, um, I, I often blame the speaker for the fact that I'm in politics because uh, in his first campaign, I was knocking on doors in Revere with Nita Ladinsky, God rest her soul. Um, we were out in the pouring rain. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. And I'd knock on the door and I'd say, hi, I'm Tony Zambuto. Please consider voting for my dear friend Bob DeLeo. He'll make a great state representative. And after about 100 households, I kind of got that bug to do it for myself. So every time things get a little tough in politics, I would go back to the speaker and say, 
If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in this stupid business. And, uh, but uh, I, we love him, and he was, you know, it's almost like the Patriots. We have nine Super Bowls, and, and we're spoiled. Uh, six Super Bowls, they went to nine, whatever. But we had all that, and we were spoiled rotten. We're spoiled rotten having the speaker uh, represent us for all these years. And, and don't kid anybody, we got an awful lot done because of him being in that position, and we'll never forget it. So uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, being with the speaker again. So uh, I, I thank you so much for putting this motion in, Council Guanasso. Thank you. On the motion, all in favor, all opposed? Aye. So voted. Calendar item number nine, motion presented by Council Morbido, that the mayor be requested to direct the appropriate department to re replenish the rock surface at the pause and play dog park. Council Morbido. Thank you, Mr. President. A little contention, be uh, contention be between you and my other colleague, who's been on the council longer, who's a better friend to Speaker DeLeo. My God, it, does, it never stops between you two, huh? <laughs> you seem to um, be the only one who thinks that. We didn't have any contentious speech. We were offering praise. It's what we say behind your back afterwards. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, first, let me uh, congratulate you, Mr. President, and congratulate um, Vice President Visconti um, on your achievement tonight as president and vice president. Um, I just want to, um, my motion is very uh, clear and direct. Um, a couple constituents came to me about um, to discuss the pause and play dog park on Sargent Street. Um, it's a great park, you know, um, great place to take a dog for uh, activities, get their exercise out. Um, but over the years, uh, it's been weatherized and rocks have disintegrated. So I would hope um, after the mayor sees this motion, and I hope I have the support of my colleagues to pass this, that he will um, replenish the rock surface at the park um, at some time, hopefully like around the spring after the winter. Thank you, Councillor. Any other councillors want to speak on this motion? I might take a minute to, to uh, say I think it's a great motion, and uh, I've been here so long that I remember when we were trying to get the land for that dog park from the state. So uh, it, it's, it's amazing that the time has flown by and we need new uh, stones there. So uh, uh, great for noticing it, great for putting this in, and uh, thank you. On the motion. All in favor? All opposed? So It's just a couple late motions that were submitted. Calendar item number 10, motion presented by Councilor Rotundo, that the mayor request inspectional services or whichever department he deems appropriate to investigate the Verizon store property for rat burrows and have them baited to prevent rats from going into residential properties. Councilor Rotundo. It speaks for itself. Thank you very much. All in favor, all opposed? So vote. Calendar item number 11, motion presented by Councillor Guanasso, that the mayor request inspectional services to notify the new owners of the former Sozios to property, uh, to, of the Sozios property to bait for rats. Councillor Guanasso. Mr. President, uh, there's a lot of boroughs in and about the uh, Verizon and the uh, old Sozio site in area residents at the condos at the uh, condominium association have reported to several residents that they're, they're there, they're inundating the neighborhood, and the least the, the property owners can do is to feed up these uh, boroughs, close them up, and put the necessary uh, ingredients inside to rid the uh, area of these rodents. I guess they're quite large, and uh, they're concerned, and uh, I am concerned also because I represent that area, and I, I want to make sure that the safety and health of the residents who live there uh, are taken care of. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Guanasso. Any other councilors? On the motion. All in favor, all opposed? So voted. No further business. The City Council will stand adjourned until January 25th. Motion Thank to adjourn. Thank you all for your attendance.